Yo, I'm back with another good one. You know how I'm coming. And today I'm feeling kind of grand, you know, like 50 grand, as my dad would say. We actually exposed the nuts and bolts of the Live Scores app that I'm building. And this is important to me because in the last video, I said that it's my dream to become a senior architect one day. And in order to do that, I have to do more projects outside of work. I have to put myself out there, learn and grow more. So with that being said, we're going to actually get into the how, you know, how did I build it out? What was the mindset that I had into, you know, trying to figure out how to actually build this out and what the tech stack should be, right? Let's get into it. Okay, so let me go ahead and showcase the app for you guys real quick and go over the key features that I have right now. Um, refresh, boom, ball hog, we deliver nothing but buckets, live games, news, and more. Yeah, soon. All right, there's that. Let me click on one of these. Get a nice little little simple stat page. We're going to clean this guy up in the future. Trust me, we ain't leaving it like this. Like, look, what is this? What? Huh? Nah, we ain't leaving it like that. But you do get information that you care about. And that's all I really cared about for the first you know, iteration, the first MVP. Okay, so this is the actual goal. And the reason why I'm even building this thing out right now is because I eventually want this to scale in such a way where it's community driven, it's personalized. Um, you really feel connected to, you know, the app, the application itself. And it gives you all the information, the news, the media and everything that you want in a central place. And it's actually, you know, made for basketball enthusiasts and people who love the game. So the, the, the key element here is that that algorithm that I want to be able to create. It pays attention to, you know, how you utilize the application and analyzes everything you do. How do you explore and browse through the app? What content are you, you know, mainly clicking on or looking at? And as we keep getting information, the algorithm gets a lot better with, you know, presenting you a better home screen. It's kind of like you help us build the app to your liking. I want to eventually get to that point. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited to to build this thing. So let's actually get into, um, you know, the stack, the code and how I built this thing out. Right. So, okay. So let's actually get into the stack itself. Um, and how I'm actually building this thing out. First things first, let's talk about how I'm deploying this thing. Um, and I am actually using for What is for It's a extremely simple way to actually get deployments out and be able to be able to view your application. It's very simple. You choose a framework, you connect your, your, uh, Git repository, you hit deploy. And that's why I'm using it <laughs> as a developer. It's just mindless. You just simple. So that's what we're using to deploy. Okay. So now I have the actual code up. Let's talk about the framework that I'm using. And that framework is remix jazz. Now, Remix JS is similar to Next.js in the sense that it's a full stack framework. The difference here though, is that Remix actually focuses on web standards and wrapping those web standards with a little bit of framework magic, um, as well as React, right? To get the job done. And for the developer, you're able to easily build resilient and UX driven web apps that your users will love. Now, so, I won't go too far into what that magic is, but essentially one of the things that they do is polyfill those web standards and give them to you on node side of things and allows you to better build out your your server side uh, functionality in a more web standardish way that uh, you can kind of like reason with a little bit better. So it'll give you a better developer experience on that end as well. So that's one reason why I'm using it actually. Uh, Another set of reasons why I'm using it is, uh, number one, my job currently uses it. So I figured, duh, like, why don't I use it to actually improve on that end? Right. The other reason is because of the, the community, like most frameworks, um, if it's a really good, well-known framework, you have a really good, uh, community that can help back you and help you out with what you're building and you can trust that the framework will be well maintained, right? If there's a community behind it. Um, the other reason is the fact that frameworks allow to allow you to, you know, not have to deal with too many things, uh, such as routing and, and set up with that, um, your build tools, um, you know, folder structure, 
for the most part right um and just your 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 overall you know architecture can kind of like be simplified if you use a framework that's another reason and the final reason is the the server side rendering side of things um i tried to do server side rendering without a framework and it was kind of it, it's it's not that fun I'll, I'll put it that way um a full stack framework such as remix allows you to be able to actually you know get started get the server side rendering stuff working for you and get that app up way faster so those are key reasons why i suggest that you use a framework for one and why i'm using one right so there's that now, with that being said, let's actually go into um, what SSR is, right? Because that is, you know, how this app is actually being handled, right? Server side rendered. So let's talk about it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this real simple. Think all the way back to the early 2000s, if you can, before there was Next.js, before there was Remix.js, before Angular, even um, React. All the all these nice, beautiful frameworks that we have before that time before we had web apps that rendered client side, right? There was how a website normally functioned. Um, you you make the initial request when you first visit the page, it hits the server, server generates that HTML, sends it back to the client. And you'll slowly see that there's additional assets being requested. The screen starts to print things piece by piece. That, that that whole process is part of server side rendering back in the early 2000s. Well, luckily now we got a lot faster with that and a lot cleaner. So that's what SSR is. Um, if you can remember every single thing that you used to do on a website, um, as far as linking to another page involved that process. So it's that simple, server side rendering. The server sends the HTML file, done. <laughs> it's really that simple okay so enough of all that talking let's actually go through the code real quick not gonna be long-winded at all let me direct your eyes to line 14 of the remix config js file okay like i said real simple first thing i want to highlight is boom matter of fact nah this part this is what i want to highlight um locally we have to we're actually in development mode locally obviously and we have to actually specify how to create that that function handler and actually have the the remix dev server actually spin up and execute the things that it needs to execute but if we're in Vercel when we make an actual deployment we don't have to identify that Vercel takes care of that and it builds that that uh serverless function handler and the service function in general and actually spins up the, all the things that it needs to spin up but locally we have to say what what to do right so with that being said let's go to the server js file and sure enough, create request handler. That's it. That's it. Get the, the the remix, you know, the build, you know, explain what mode it's in, all that good stuff. And that's it. We don't have to spend too much time here. I'm not going to go into what the actual handler is. Nah. nah, nah. But if you want to get more insight of what remix is actually doing here, I encourage you to, you know, research what the config actually is what options you have in there and also you know look further into this right here if you want to dive deeper into that but for right now i'm worrying about all that the next thing we're going to actually dive into is right here this entry server tsx file this is important this is where that html that we generate Boom, where is it at? Turns into markup, which is the actual HTML that we send to the server. But before we get there, let's 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 talk about this file real quick. Okay, so first things first is the fact that I'm using a component library. And what you have to do with component libraries is actually create the cache and the theme for that said library, extract the CSS that it generates and creates, and actually put that into your HTML string that is going to be ultimately sent to the client. So with that being said, here's, here's how we do that. Create the cache, provide the, the theme, the, uh, the cache, the theme, all that good stuff and pass it into this right here, this remix server component. That's obviously coming from remix. Now just know that we're providing the cache and the theme for the actual CSS um, component library that we have right which is material ui okay we render the component to a string real quick 
which is basically just rendering this this uh functional component that I created that has all that stuff we're going to actually provide the styles to it but initially we don't have those styles so we have to extract the actual css chunks from that html string and now we get a full-fledged markup that we really care about and want sent to the client that's it all right that's it so that's how remix does it it's a little bit more hookup because of the fact that I am using a component library and it required that additional setup for it. But ultimately, if it wasn't for the component library, it literally just would be lines 42 down to 53 for the most part. Like, yeah, it'd be that simple, right? If you were to try server-side rendering yourself along with having this component library, <laughs> it wouldn't be so simple. So the beauty of using a framework, right? now. What do we do with this, this markup that we're sending to the client? Glad you asked, let's get into it. So now we're into the entry for the client side of things. And all we do here, all we do here is actually hydrate that, uh, that HTML string that we get, which is basically parsing that, um, that HTML string, having the client actually hook into that app instance that is um, sent from the server, then have the client actually run the the application the way we all pretty much know at this point, which is on the client side, right? Which makes it all smooth, like buttery smooth, right? And dynamic and quick to react to anything the user is actually doing, right? So we get that with this function right here. So um, we actually, you know, it kind of looks familiar to what was on the service side of things, right? The only difference is this part right here, which is some remix magic that I don't, I honestly don't know, but we wasn't going to go that deep. Anyway, remix does some magic here, actually, uh, pulls in the app instance. Um, and you know, as soon as we actually can do hydration, that's all line 29 through 35 is as soon as we can do the hydration, we'll actually go ahead and hydrate. That's it. Simple. All right. So with that being said, now we're going to go into the root. OK, now we get into this root TSX file, which is essentially the root of the app. <laughs> That's the name. It's the root of the app. So we provide our meta information here, such as the title of the page, viewport, all that stuff. We provide the links, Google fonts. Um, any global styles, you know, any styles like I'm using a React carousel as well. So there are styles for that. We provide all that here and it is indeed the actual HTML document. Now, here's here's a here's the thing. This document lives in here. This doc the, the document here lives in here. Yeah. So that is this is the root app that is ultimately being rendered on the server and hydrated on the client, right? So I'm not gonna go that deep into the document. This is where we actually, you know, render the CSS that was extracted out from um, here on the server. Where's that? From here, all that good stuff. I'm not gonna go that deep into it. The main thing I do wanna pay attention to, we render children, which is the app. The main thing I wanna pay attention to is the layout and the outlet, um, the error boundary and the catch boundary. So real quick, I'm gonna explain what those are. The layout, and most frameworks do this now, full stack frameworks um, provide a layout where you can have, for example, let me see if I can pull that up real quick. Let me see, boom. Boom, this, if I go here, boom. Notice that the footer stays and this hero image stays and the, the uh, navigation bar stays. That is part of the layout. So let me go back to the code, boom, boom. That lives here and the code for it is in here. I'm not gonna go through that code, don't worry. Um, the other thing is the actual app itself which is again, um, boom, right here. This center part right here, this all this is actually being um, embedded into that outlet component and rendered 
uh, within the layout, right? So that's that. Now, if there is any error in the application, we've created a root error boundary, which is something Remix has handily provided to us, where it will catch any error, any issue, so long as at that actual route um, level, there isn't another error boundary or capture boundary for it. So it will go all the way up to here, where the error will actually propagate up or bubble up to the, um, the root. We'll catch it here and we'll render something. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So um, we get 404 not found, and then you actually get this message that I presented, which is, oops, looks like you tried to visit a page that does not exist. How did that show up? Click, because it is. Boom. Here's the catch, catch a boundary. If it's a 404, it renders that message you saw. Now, if there's any other error and we don't have a case for it, it'll just throw a, a new error with the actual data from, you know, for, you know, what the issue is and the status. And it will actually be caught here. And then that's when we render the default message of, well, we don't know what that error is. You know, it's something on our end, right? So that's a cool thing that Remix actually gives you um, is the way to handle errors so easily. So let me go ahead and go back to that. Boom, simple. Now we got the root done. I'm running through this thing. All right, next is the routes themselves. So we got the app here. How do we get to the home page? Right here. Boom. This is the home page. Okay, let's talk about how this home page is rendered. Okay, from Remix standpoint, when it comes to displaying a page, it only cares about the routes. Okay, so we provide the main root index route. We say, you know, we want to export this home page, which by the way, this pages thing is how I have it set up, right? You don't have to have this pages directory. You could literally have everything ran and rendered and coded out inside this root index file for the home page itself. But for how my brain works, I want everything separated. So you can import styles, you can import and actually have your, your links similar to how we have it in root. Where's that? Boom. Same type of thing, right? But the key thing I'm going to point out is the actual page itself and the loader. So let's go ahead and go into the actual loader first. Pages, home, loader, TS. All right. I'm not going to go into the service, but from the title of the function here you can tell that we're actually waiting to get games and this is where the fetch to the third party api to actually get the game data is made inside of this service that i created we're not gonna go that far into that but i do want to explain this loader here so remix has a dedicated way of um having a handling actual server side request and actually getting the data for that page um, on initial render from this loader here. It has to be named this and it has to be exported. That is how the framework works. Um, and essentially what you do is you make any API request that you need to make, you know, get the data, da 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 ya, yada ya, and you finally return this JSON format. This, if you're familiar with um, dealing with uh, websites and things of that nature in general, this doesn't look that foreign to you. This this actually makes sense. You know, get the games, you turn with JSON. A little helper function for that. All right. The only difference here is if there's any issue with getting a start date and end date or anything fails out, um, you just return this this empty state. But other than that, it's straightforward. Get the games, return the games. Simple. Um Remix also provides a, a way to have the actual loader data typed out and getting additional information. I'll get into the TypeScript side of things in a second. Um, but for right now, the main thing I want to point out is this is how we actually load the game data um, from the server. So boom, we send this out. Remember this home loader data type that I created. And let's go into the actual page itself. 
this is the actual home page finally we get there right remix has a cool way on line 20 where we actually can use the loader data that we defined here in this loader ts file again these are additional abstractions that i did you don't you can literally have all this in one file but uh i don't recommend doing that um so you actually get the games data additional metadata and I'm scroll past all that use effect stuff and show where we rendered the carousel that you've seen. So where's that? Boom, 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 boom. Here you go. This carousel. Yep. This carousel that I'm rendering is boom right here and another component. We don't necessarily have to walk through that component. I just wanted to show you how a, what a route is, how a route is handled, um, how information information is actually uh, grabbed and loaded into the actual page. And the games themselves are just being rendered in this carousel component. Simple. Um, now let's talk about one final thing and how we actually poll for um, live updates or actually pull to the third party API to give us game data back. Um, and here's the beauty of frameworks, right? I didn't notice I didn't talk about how the routes are set up. I didn't have to talk about it because Remix does that for us. We're using uh, React Router under the hood, right? So, boom. We only need this to run once in order to start this interval. What is this interval? It's an interval that actually does the polling or the re-request for updates. Um, so every minute we refresh and actually revalidate if the data needs to be updated or not. Okay. Now React Router does this automatically. Whenever you um, interact with the page, maybe you actually click a physical refresh button on the page and queue for that 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 update um whatever you you may do to interact with that website react router will automatically do this revalidation thing right here now the beauty of you know react router is the fact that they actually expose a hook that allows you to manually do that revalidation so that's all i'm doing is taking uh, advantage of that exposed hook to actually trigger a manual revalidation every minute. That's it. So that's how that data is being updated um, and appears to be live currently. Okay. And that's pretty much it. That's how this app currently is built out. Um, and it's the same thing for the actual uh, stats page. Now, the way this is, <laughs> the name of this file is a little bit weird. That's because of how Remix handles its routes. Um, you can actually have it, you know, say that, hey, we have a game stats route. So that's slash game stats. Or, and that leads to um, the stats page. But we also have this dynamic um, ID here or parameter. And what can be filled in here is the actual game ID. So let's see how that actually works. So game stats dot dollar sign game ID. Okay, let's see how that works. So if we go to the game stats page, go to the loader, expose from the params, we get that game ID, right? And let me go ahead and show you that as well on the browser, how that works as well. So boom, it doesn't matter that there's no stats for a game yet. You can see that just like the name of the file where we named it game stats, that's the actual route name. And then look at that where game ID was that dollar sign game ID is being replaced with the actual game ID. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. So we get that game ID, get the actual game stats. And the process is very similar to how we handle the home page. That simple. It's really that simple. So I won't go too deep into the actual component abstractions and, you know, how I render each piece of the actual page. I just wanted to mainly highlight how Remix does what it does in terms of handling server side rendering. 
um, it's folder structure, having the layout here, right? Having it's uh, the pages, right? The actual pages uh, defined here, the loader TS file, right? The routes themselves, right? So that's pretty much it. Real quick, um, if you want to dive further, I will definitely leave a link to the actual code itself and also additional resources so that way you can do further homework and digging to really, really understand and get a grasp of how Remix does what it does and how the tools actually play together, all the tools that I'm using, right? So that is pretty much it. Mike.